Last month, US and European regulators reached a deal on the policing of the $700 trillion over-the-counter derivatives market. So what does the future hold? With me in the studio today to discuss is Leslie Sanchez. Leslie, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Welcome. Now, if we look at this um, situation, the deal really was reached when both bodies are preparing to tighten up the oversight of the vast but opaque market, which was blamed or for amplifying the crisis of 2008. But what were the main issues leading up to this decision? The main problem posed by uh, uh, off-exchange markets or RTC markets is the fact that it's highly, uh, it's actually not highly decentralized, it's completely decentralized. And there's very little information on, on them available. So um, after the crisis of 2008, the G20 met in 2009 to try to fix these problems and urged countries to find solutions to, uh, uh, um, to the problem. Obviously, you know, that's not uh, achievable to a full extent because, you know, uh, uh, OTC contracts by definition, they have customized uh, uh, terms and they're not standard. But, you know, you can still achieve uh, some degree of centralization of data and deals, which is the important thing. And the specific terms of the deal you, you refer to, which was reached uh, last month between the US and EU, addresses a specific problem, which is the uh, cross-border transactions. Indeed, the deal was reached to avoid a spat between these two trading blocs, the, be it the USA and the EU, um, which some analysts or some participants had warned could split the financial markets. Was this the most appropriate action, do you think? I think it's, it certainly was the best action to take because the, um, both uh, regulatory bodies, like you take the Dodd-Frank Title Seven, which is, let's it's the translation of these G20 conclusions in concrete measures in the US and the EU equivalent, which is the EMIR. Both have a very similar approach, but both they have to uh, deal with domestic laws and uh, that kind of thing. So that left many market participants with conflicting requirements from both sides. So I think this, um, this agreement is a, it's a good thing in the sense that it brings the two um, regulatory bodies uh, together and, you know, they avoid uh, stepping on each other somehow. Now, in reality, the derivatives trading rules suffered a bit of a, a shaky start because um, some issues were still persisting. What, why was this really? Some people were ready, some people weren't. And what's going to be the consequences, if any? There are a number of risk mitigation techniques which nobody can escape from with this new regulation. Uh, well, basically a risk mitigation technique, I mean, you have the general rule, which is the, you know, could be EMIR or MIFID or Dodd-Frank Title Seven, but then you have the specific measures which are, which are called risk mitigation techniques. The problem is that you, you have a large number of players in the market which are not financially uh, sophisticated, uh, small firms that maybe, you know, you could have a real estate developer privately owned that has a couple of positions and they still need to comply with this. So that makes it obviously uh, a bit complicated. So obviously, computationally, analytically, and, and in terms of computation, it's actually quite, achieve, quite, quite challenging. Mm -hmm. So you have a large number of players that you know, they're in involved in this process. So it's obviously, it doesn't surprise that the start, it's been a bit uh, shaky, as you say. Of course, but, and obviously there are so many variables, but some market players expect it could be six months um, before things are sorted out perhaps even longer, what do you think? Well, I think it's certainly it's going to be longer than six months. I don't see, uh, you know, th th there's another problem. There's a large number of non-financial counterparts, especially the ones that trade large volumes, which I think are going to have a lot of trouble. For a bank, it's, you know, it's the day to day to deal with this. And they have developers in-house, they have uh, legal uh, in-house, and uh, they can afford to, to deal with this problem. But you have, for instance, an oil trading company uh, where, you know, they're, they're specialized in the physical market. They use derivatives, OTC derivatives, to hedge certain positions, but it's not their thing. You know, they just do it for hedging purposes, but they still need to go through the whole process and they find themselves that they need suddenly to post collateral, you know, and uh, maybe use electronic venues, which is another requirement also of, of, of the regulation. And 
things which are relatively uh, complex. So, you know, I would say that six months is very optimistic, especially for those type of participants. For a bank, it wouldn't be surprising, but for non-financial counterparties, it's a bit tricky. Yeah, tricky does seem to be the word. It's certainly a very interesting topic and something which will affect so many different um, businesses across the board. But thank you for coming in today, Leslie, and chatting it thank through with much. us. Thank you. Pleasure. Okay, well that's all from Leslie and myself for the moment, but make sure you click back to Dukascopy TV for many more exclusive interviews and today's press review. Goodbye for now.